Well, we are seeing some early weakness today. Investors obviously in Canada digesting the weakness we've seen in the oil price, which has been on a five-day slide. OPEC plus surprise in the market as they give a roadmap towards fresh production. But on top of that, the market also trying to get the latest on the U.S. economy um, and what ultimately happens with interest rates. There have been a few signs of growing pressure towards an economic slowdown in the United States. So after this record run-up in stocks, a lot of people are trying to make sense on what kind of momentum story there will be going forward. But momentum is a key word because obviously Betting against this market has been a losing battle so far this year. Let's get some insight and analysis now from Brenda O'Connor Juanez, who's a senior vice president and financial advisor at UBS, for how she's thinking about these markets as we kick off June trading. Brenda, great to see you. What's, uh, what's been on your mind of late? So, John, here's how I'm looking at things. You know, one of the biggest realizations the market has had is that the U.S. economy just hasn't been as sensitive to rates as we thought. You know, markets haven't imploded because we haven't seen those six rate cuts that people were pricing at the beginning of the year. Look, the S&P's up 11%. So to think about why that is, it's really because, firstly, U.S. consumer debt is, for the most part, fixed. Secondly, we have really strong corporate balance sheets. And then finally, this whole notion of strong economic growth has translated into really good earnings growth. Uh, the issue is now, and I think you alluded to this in your comments, is that stocks are pretty fully valued. And so we don't think that there's a ton of upside from here. We increased our S&P forecast to 5,500 for the end of the year, but that's only three or 4% from these levels. So we're going to have to be a little bit more creative about how we generate returns from here on in. Okay. So on that creativity topic, what are the kinds of areas you're zeroing in on right now? Right. So from an asset class perspective, no big surprise, we still prefer fixed income to equities. Uh, you know, we think that the whole rate repricing is behind us. We are pretty sure that the possibility of a rate hike, which we saw in April, um, is no longer a possibility. And, you know, we're looking at levels in terms of uh, fixed income, you know, with the tenure between four and a quarter, four and a half is an interesting entry point. You know, John, you and I have talked about how the Fed is not derailed. It is delayed. Look, we all know this is taking longer than we expected. But fixed income is still an interesting place, especially for those that are sitting on cash. And uh, it does create um, a higher bar for certain equities uh, when people can maybe lock in some nice yields uh, in the bond market. And if, if those trends uh, towards lower rates uh, ultimately create an opportunity to lock in um, the current yields that are available in the market. Um, if you were thinking about equities by comparison, I, I, I'm imagining that uh, there are a number of sectors you're cautious on. Are there any sectors that you're uh, optimistic about right now? So I would say that from an equity perspective, we still like tech, and that may sound surprising given where valuations are, but frankly, uh, with the PEs trading at 28 times forward earnings, they're, they're not cheap, but these valuations are justified in our view. They're justified not only because of the fundamentals, John, but more importantly in my view is what Q1 guidance in the earnings announcements told us, uh, you know, from a lot of these big tech firms, we saw a pathway here for Q2 where we can see and expect EPS to be up 23% versus a broader market uh, of around 6%. So that's attractive to us. I will make one other point on tech. I am not a believer at all of these comparisons to the dot-com bubble. I think this is quite a different backdrop. In the late 90s, we had companies that weren't generating revenue. We we had a situation where new entrants were eating the lunch of companies like IBM. This is so different in my view. The incumbents now are the ones that are in the position of power. They, these are strong businesses. You just mentioned uh, NVIDIA's market cap being bigger than the whole entire Canadian um, uh, market cap. These are cash flowing entities that I think will continue to benefit with AI spending on that strong trajectory. I think another uh, big trend that um, if we were talking about AI in 2024, we'll probably get even more attention. But, you know, you've got stocks like Eli Lilly, which is up more than 40 percent. People constantly talking about 
arrival, Novo Nordisk, and the surge in demand for uh, weight loss drugs. Um, that is a trend you've been watching very closely. How do you think about it as an investor? Right. So I know that in my social con uh encounters we are all talking about glp1 drugs and frankly if you remove ai and glp1 drugs from the market we may not have much of a rally to be talking about right now john uh, the thing is if you believe as we do that gdp is going to slow a little bit then healthcare is still a sector that you want to be allocated to why because frankly healthcare has defensive qualities in nature and also if you allocate to some of these big healthcare brands that have strong market share, these have proven over history to do well in this point in the market cycle. You know, on those GLP-1 drugs, you're right, we've seen, you know, great performance this year. I started talking about some of these names a year ago. We have performance up to 70% since that point. But I, re I still think there's a lot of upside here for two reasons. Number one, a lot of these firms are innovating in terms of different delivery formats like ingestibles, which I think could expand the market. And also just looking at the U.S. alone, John, this is an economy or a population of 330 million people, 70 percent of which are overweight or obese. There is still a lot of market share to be had here.